Guys, for all the solutions of this book, visit forthesakeofeducation.com. I've been working hard of putting all the problems into one convenient place for you to be able to do your homework easily. So pay us a visit. This is problem that says the operation of the fuel pump for an automobile depends on the reciprocating action of the rocker arm ABC, which is pinned at B and is spring loaded at A and D. When the smooth cam is in, posi in the position shown, determine the horizontal and vertical components of force at the pin and the force along the spring DF for equilibrium. The vertical force acting on the rocker arm at A is at F of A is equal to 60 newtons and C is equal to F of C at 125 newtons. So looking at this problem, don't, again, don't let it, uh, don't overcomplicate it in your head. All you need to know is that at this point B, this is a pin and this is fixed. And basically this rocker arm is moving back and forth like so with the movement of this cam right so that's all you really need to understand but you could treat this rocker arm as a simple line to simplify the problem and that's what i'm going to do right here this is the rocker arm right and this is point a let's call this b more or less this is D, and this last here is C. And then we're gonna draw the free body diagram and all the forces that act on this. I'm gonna call this force going straight up, which is this one right here, and I'm gonna call it F of A. And I know it is equal to 60 Newtons. Now at, at D, we have the spring. Let's call it F of the spring, F of S. And we know that this is an angle of, oops, this is a, this angle right here is 30 degrees. And then we know that we have a force here, F of C, which is equal to 125 Newtons. Then we know that we're going to have reactions at B. And let's say we have a vertical reaction and a horizontal reaction. The vertical I'm going to call it f of b of y and the horizontal is going to be f of b of x. So I hope that makes sense. Basically this diagram here is a rocker arm which I am treating as if it was a straight line right here on the diagram. I just throw it outside of the diagram like I usually don't do this but this is just for you guys to simplify. Now uh, that being said, now this problem gets very easy. So let's start. First, um, we have three things that we're trying to find. F of S, F of B of Y, and F of B of X. And you know that if you do the sum of the moments at B, you're going to get rid of these two moments, and this one's going to be left. So let's do just that. Sum of the moments at B, assuming counterclockwise is positive, is equal to zero. And this is equal to minus f of a times the distance from a to b, which is 0.05 meters. Now I'm converting millimeters to meters, so this will be 0.05 meters. Don't get confused and do 0.5, that will be a mistake. 10 millimeters is 0.01 meters and 20 millimeters is 0.02 meters. Why do I do meters? It's because it's more common to do newtons, uh, newton meters and newton millimeters. Although you could also do that, but I like to use meters because this is what I'm used to. Uh, back to our equation. So the moment created by the force F of A, and I assuming counterclockwise is positive. So you know that F of A is trying to turn this clockwise, so it's negative. Minus. Now, you need the vertical component of S of, of F of S because you know that the horizontal component is not creating any moment. So F of S cosine of 30 gives us the vertical component. This is the vertical component of S of F of S times the distance from D to B, which is 0.01 meters. And last up, oh, and this is a negative because it's also trying to turn it it's trying to turn this thing clockwise. And then the last one is uh, F of C times 0.03 because it's, uh, it's vertical and it's a distance from B to C and it's trying to turn this structure counterclockwise, so it's positive. 
Okay, so we got f of a and we got f of c right here and right here. So we're just going to plug them in. 0 is equal to negative 60 times 0 0.05 minus f of s, which is what we're trying to find, cosine of 30 times 0 0.01 plus f of c, which is 125 times 0 0.03. Uh, this is equal to 0 is equal to negative 3 minus 0 0.00866 f of s plus 3.75 solve for f of s and you should get that this is equal to 86.6 newtons and we got f of s now is uh, we can find the other two by doing some of the forces on the x is equal to 0 and it's equal to, super easy guys, if you look at the diagram, is minus f of b of x plus the horizontal component of f, f of s, which is f of s uh, sine of 30. And if you solve for f of b of x and you plug in this in here, you should get that f of b of x is equal to 43.3 .3 newtons. And now we're going to do the sum of the forces at y, which is equal to 0, and it is equal to f of a plus f of b of y minus the vertical component of f of s, which is f of s cosine of 30, plus f of c. Um, we have all these values except the f of b of y, so we could plug them in and solve. This would look something like this. 0 is equal to f of a 60 plus f of b of y minus 86.6 cosine of 30 plus 125. So if you do some basic algebra and solve for f of b of y, you're going to get that it is equal to negative 110 newtons. What does it mean that it's negative? Well, it simply means that I didn't guess right when I drew the diagram because I guessed that f of b was going up and I guessed wrong. f of b is actually going down because that's why it's negative. So what you do is you can correct your diagram and then just do something like this. f of b of y right here. Let me also erase this. Just throw it the other way. Oops. And then change the sign. And 110 newtons, and that means that f of b of y is going down. Final answer, remember f of b of y is going down. Uh, final answer for f of b of x, and final answer for the force generated by the spring.